Hello everyone and welcome to Toon Reviews, the show that reviews cartoons both old and new to give them the final rating of squash it, watch it, or box it. And today we're going to be reviewing the much anticipated Netflix series Hilda. But before we get into that, I wanted to remind everyone to subscribe and hit that bell icon so that you don't miss any notifications for me. Today's featured fan art is by Little Skittle in the community discord. If you have fan art that you'd like me to feature on the channel, you can send it to me on any of the linked social media sites below or in the community discord itself. It doesn't matter what your skill level is, I'll feature it regardless. This is also just a super quick warning, but there will be spoilers in this video. However, as it was pointed out to me in the comments section of my last video, this may be counterintuitive to the people watching this review to see if this series is worth watching or not. For that reason, I will be warning you when I'm about to talk about a spoiler and then put a timestamp on screen to where you can skip past that spoiler. That way, people who want to avoid spoilers can still watch the video and get an idea of what this show is about and if they want to watch it or not. Now that we got all of that out of the way, it's time to get into the rest of the video. For those of you who don't know, Hilda is an animated series on Netflix. It was released on September 21st, 2018, with 13 episodes in total, each episode being approximately 24 minutes in length. It's based off of a graphic novel by the same name. The writer of the novel and creator of the animated series is a man by the name of Luke Pearson. There's a total of six graphic novels of Hilda. Their names are Hilda and the Troll, Hilda and the Midnight Giant, Hilda and the Black Hound, Hilda and the Bird Parade, Hilda and the Stone Forest, and an up-and-coming unknown edition to the series that is currently untitled. The animated series stays very true to the graphic novels, the subject material contained in these books being a subject of full episodes and plot points. This is one of those rare instances when a show adaptation remains just as charming as the book it's based off of. And of course, that brings us to the very first subject of discussion on this video, the art and animation. Hilda is a beautifully animated show that feels like a children's storybook that came to life, creating the illusion that the characters on the page started to move. That's basically the best way I can explain how the show itself looks. As far as the art style, it remains pretty faithful to the graphic novel style, albeit the style was changed slightly. This was probably to make the animation process a little easier on the animators. But this isn't necessarily a bad thing, as I find the art style in the show to be just as visually pleasing as the one used in the graphic novels. It still has the same unique feeling to it. One of the first things that I noticed when I started watching the series was the limited color palette. While the show works with a limited color palette, it doesn't feel like it's inhibitor in any way, shape, or form. For example, the daytime palette they generally use reds, teals, white, black, brown, and green. This is a bold move and something they commit to all the way through the series. Each background and environment feels extremely lifelike and magical, despite their small variation of colors. And even though these palettes are small, the colors paired together work harmoniously with one another, creating a unique unique and memorable experience for the viewer. In my opinion, the limited color palette makes it even more obvious that this series is a graphic novel adaptation. This is because graphic novels and prints generally use limited color to save on costs, or because of technological limitations. To see this also transfer over to the cartoon itself is something that I love and think is executed very well. And I think another reason it's able to retain its storybook-like vibe is because of the line work. It almost looks like the lines themselves are drawn with a crayon-like medium. They have very obvious and perfections to them that add to that effect. It makes it look like something which was drawn in pencil and just began moving around the page. This line style also translates well within the animation itself. The way the lines move within this style I find to be mesmerizing and has such a unique feel to it. Most animated shows don't take this route in terms of style and it's nice to see that they took the risks and dared to be different. In fact, the style of this show heavily reminds me of Nickelodeon's Chalk Zone, which was another very visually interesting cartoon. They also have these background sprites to use from faraway angles which remind me of the way Steven Universe shows their characters from a distance. These background sprites are simplified versions of the characters and play homage to the graphic novels as this method is used in them as well. It never feels cheaply done and is well executed. As far as the general movement of the characters, it's very smooth and moves naturally along the screen. Hilda was animated by Mercury Filmworks, which is the same studio that animated the Mickey Mouse shorts, Tangled, the series, and Atomic Puppet. Mercury used the program Toon Boom Harmony to bring this series to life, combining rigged puppets and drawn key poses. This was done to make the animation less jerky and fit the style of the graphic novels. The choice of the animation methods they used I think works very well as the characters remain on model but also flow with their movements and don't feel too rigid. I think that this portion is actually pretty solid and I don't have much more to say about it. That being said, it's time to move on to the next section of the video, the music, sound effects, and voice acting.
The music and sound effects in this series is absolutely stunning. Right away when you begin to watch the show, you're greeted with a theme song by Grimes. This theme sets the tone right away, setting a rustic, mythical, and mysterious tone for the show. And just as well, the theme in the music continues to be on key with the visuals and the story. Other music in this series is by Ryan Carlson and Dan Mangan. The OST matches very well with the theme of the story, staying lighthearted, upbeat, and calm throughout the series. However, it also isn't too afraid to get a little crazy to match an action-packed scene. It isn't ever too overwhelming and enhances the overall experience of the show by a lot. One of my favorite songs from the list is Down by the Singing Sea by Walter Martin, which they use a lot in time-lapse scenes. It gives you a sense of adventure and gives you an overall happy feeling while watching. Back to You by Twerps is also another good and upbeat song for their time-lapse scenes. The sound effects within the show are also pretty solid and aren't really overwhelming. Twig, which is Hilda's pet deer fox, makes little hoof sounds when he runs. I think this is a cute touch to add and certainly adds to the overall quality of the show. The attention to detail in these effects is something that I love and certainly shows that the team really cares about what they're working on. The voice acting is also pleasant and is met with just the right amount of emotion. In scenes of high tension, it doesn't ever feel like the voice actors are at any point in time holding back. For a specific example, in the episode The Tide Mice, Hilda his mother Joanna scolds Hilda for casting an enchantment on both her and David. The delivery of her line in this scene was very well executed and felt exactly like how a worried mother would reprimand her child for reckless behavior. Hilda. I know you meant well, but what were you thinking? The show features the voice talents of Bella Ramsey as Hilda, Amara Felzan Oji as Frida, Oliver Nelson as David, Daisy Haggard as Hilda's mother, and Rasmus Hardiker as Alfer. The other supporting voice cast is also very talented and really helps the characters come to life. Alfer's voice also does really fit the description of preppy elf, David's voice as a timid boy, Frida's as a determined child prodigy, and Hilda's as an adventurous little girl who loves the outdoors and adventuring. This is actually Actually probably the first time in a long time that just by hearing a character's voice I could give you their basic personality traits. And I honestly think this speaks to the success of their casting decisions. Speaking of character personality traits, it's time for us to get on to the next section of this video. The characters and story. The characters and story of this show is perhaps the most memorable part of this story. To give you a short and spoiler-free synopsis, Hilda follows the adventures of a young girl by the name of Hilda who needs to move out of her house in the woods to the city by the name of Trollberg. Having lived in the woods all her life, Hilda needs to adjust to her new life in the city. She meets and makes two new friends by the name of David and Frida and becomes a Sparrow Scout. The Sparrow Scouts are our equivalent to Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts, with patch earning and community service being some of their main activities. Throughout the rest of the series, Hilda, David, and Frida go on adventures to solve mysteries and fix problems caused by the many mythical beings that they come across. All this happens while Hilda is warming to the idea of Trollberg and realizing that it may not be as bad as she once thought it would be. You may have been seeing a lot of people comparing this cartoon to Gravity Falls and they wouldn't be wrong. However, Hilda is very different in that the existence of mythical beings and magic is well known and acknowledged by everyone within the series. There's no disbelief when something weird is told to them or when something unexplainable happens. Something that is refreshing to to see is Hilda's mother's reaction to befriending these mythical creatures. While her daughter does worry her at times, she does trust her enough to handle herself when it comes to dealing with these entities. Hilda doesn't feel the need to keep her involvement with these things a secret from her and they have a very healthy relationship. Hilda is open to her mother about the adventures that they go on and her mom in turn is not overbearing or overprotective about her adventures. She even openly acknowledges her daughter's affinity with such things in the episode The Troll Rock. Seeing a mother supportive and not apprehensive about her her child's talents is refreshing dynamic to see. She even sticks up for and believes in her daughter when confronted by other parents and the school teacher about Hilda's behavior. I'm glad they didn't go in the direction where Hilda felt the need to hide everything from her mother and bottle up her feelings and the truth, as this is a trope used far too commonly in cartoons about children and mystery solving. Another great thing about this cartoon is that while it is about Hilda adjusting to city life, they don't spend a painful amount of time in the school setting. They let you know in the school conference setting how she's been doing as far as adjustments and that's it. There's no other episodes that are focused around Hilda's school life, and honestly, it's perfect that way. We don't need three episodes about how Hilda is disruptive in class or how her teacher dislikes her. Having one episode that lets us know what's going on was perfect and doesn't stay on this issue for too little or for too long. Instead of showing her adjustment progress through school life, they show it through her relationships with others. As a child who only grew up with her mother, Twig, and other forest beings, she mostly needs to adjust socially. And I like how this is shown in the first episode 
episode The Sparrow Scouts when Hilda is prepared to problem solve by herself, but Frida and David decide to help her as a team. She's used to handling things by herself, but in this new setting she is learning that she doesn't need it to be that way. It's okay to rely on others for help, and this is a unique way of approaching a situation in which adjustment is the subject. And even though Hilda is coming a long way throughout the series in her social skills, it isn't just something that is resolved without conflict. She does have issues with David and Frida later in the series, which in my opinion it could have been handled a little bit better, but we'll get to that in a moment. First I wanted to give you guys a quick spoiler warning. Timestamp will be on screen onto where you can skip to avoid the spoiler. Spoiler in 3, 2, 1. In the episode The Ghost, Frida is distraught when she wakes up one morning to find that her room is a mess and isn't as organized as it usually is. This causes her to go into a panic as she's running for class president. She feels that she cannot be a good class president because she's not as put together and organized as she acts like she is. It is later revealed that Frida had made the mess herself, but every night while she sleeps, a ghost visits her and cleans it for her. This ghost was only cleaning her room because she loved and cared for a book that the ghost cared about very much. He cleaned her room to show his gratitude for her for taking care of his old possession. He had stopped cleaning the room when the book went missing, which is why Frida wakes up to a messy room. Hilda, David, and Frida go on an adventure to find the missing book, but they fail miserably. This causes a falling out between David, Frida, and Hilda. After this episode, Frida is MIA and stops hanging out with Hilda and David until the episode The Nissa, in which she only joins in at the end of the episode. Their little kerfuffle is resolved by the end of this episode, and they're friends again in the next episode, which is the season finale. Now, the problem I had with this mini arc wasn't the premise itself. I think that a falling out between these three characters due to their failure on a mission would be the perfect opportunity for character development, especially with Hilda and how she's always dragging David and Frida into dangerous situations. The problem that I had with this is that a lot of the accusations and behavior between David and Frida in the episode The Ghost seem to be completely out of character and out of nowhere. I remember when I first watched this episode, I genuinely thought that either Frida or David had been possessed or haunted by a ghost by how they were treating each other. At one point, they even start physically fighting each other in this episode and throwing insults at each other. Up until this point, there was never that level of hostility even alluded to in the series. Sure, you could tell that they were frustrated with each other sometimes with minor disagreements, but they never showed any frustration to the point of randomly beating each other up over it, especially over something so minor. I understand that Frida was under a lot of stress due to her book being missing and with the student presidential race coming up, but I highly doubt that stress would create a sudden resentment towards her friends, especially David. I can understand if she developed resentment towards towards Hilda for the situation she drags them into, but David is a scaredy cat and is often the least willing to partake in their adventures. So to me, her reaction towards David just seems completely out of nowhere. Especially since all through the episode, all they were trying to do was help Frida get the room cleaning ghost back when it wasn't even their problem. And it was actually super weird since the rest of the pacing and writing in this show was top notch. It would have been better if they had Frida just resent Hilda from this endeavor and have it slowly build up to it throughout the series. Nothing big and in your face in terms of signs, but subtle things that you can pick up on that would make her actions in this episode seem more justified and not like they were completely out of nowhere just to forward the plot. Then if they wanted David out of the mix, they should have just had David stick up for Hilda, which would cause Frida to have her feelings hurt and push him away. At least this way, there wouldn't be just a sudden resentment towards a character she had shown no previous issues with. This would also match their character arcs since David would be being brave by sticking up for somebody. While he does do this later in the series as well, I do feel this would have been a nice precursor to that. It also would have made sense for most of the resentment and aggression to be built up towards Hilda since it was alluded to multiple times throughout the series that Hilda causes them stress. I just think that with the minor change, this scene would seem a lot more organic and less out of nowhere. But to be honest, this is really the only negative thing I have to say about this series in terms of the story and characters. However, I'm not going to end it here because I have a lot more to say about it. However, in this instance, I want to give it praise. As I just mentioned, this show has perfect pacing. No problem ever feels too drawn out. You always get the crucial answers you're looking for while having small questions in the back of your mind. The bigger questions are usually answered by the end of that episode or by the end of the next one. This leaves you wanting more while allowing you to slowly piece together the puzzle. Another thing that I like is how every character is seen and implemented into the story more than once. For instance, the raven from the bird parade isn't permanently gone once his episode is over and his problem is solved. 
He comes back later in the episode, The Storm, because it's snowing out and he's cold and wants shelter. And it was honestly an extremely pleasant surprise. I'm so used to side characters like him being a one-time character. And not only did he come back, but he also served an important part in the story. The Woodman is also an excellent example of this. I honestly thought he was only there to serve as comedic relief in the start of the series and to set the tone. However, he does make a comeback in the episode The House in the Woods. And like the Raven, his return has a significant role in the plot and in Hilda's character development. And the thing about this is that none of this ever seems to be forced just to further the plot along. It's written in such a way that flows nicely and it seems to happen naturally. A lot of shows have things just for plot convenience and it never feels like the show is doing that. Well, apart from the small nitpick I had about it earlier. The other nice thing about this show is that a lot of the episodes are completely unpredictable. Some people may not like this aspect, but honestly it keeps your attention. I binged this entire series in one day and I didn't even need to stop to take a break like I do with most shows. My favorite my favorite episode would be either the Tide Mice or the Black Hound, just because I had no idea where they were going with it. They were such unique and interesting concepts that I couldn't wait to see how they ended. And even when you can predict where an episode is going, that isn't a bad thing. In fact, I would say the episodes where you can piece together things, you're meant to. This is so that you slowly build understanding throughout the episode, so that when the conclusion happens, you understand while it's happening. But just a warning before I give an example, I'm about to talk about another spoiler in 3, 2, 1. In the first two episodes of the series, it revolves around Hilda and her mother Joanna dealing with tiny people attempting to get them to leave their house. It turns out that these tiny people are elves who are fed up with Hilda and her mother accidentally stepping on them and just being an overall nuisance. An elf by the name of Elfer wants to help Hilda stay in her home, and so they go on an adventure to find the mayor, the prime minister, and later the king. Throughout this, we see how accidentally destructive Hilda is around the elves even when she's trying her hardest to be gentle. Later in this arc, she meets a giant. It's revealed that the giants left Earth and supposedly went to space because other smaller organisms on the planet were tired of them accidentally stepping on them. This was an obvious direct parallel to Hilda and her mother with the elves. The episode ends with the giant accidentally stepping on and destroying Hilda's house, not even realizing what he had done. This causes Hilda to have a moment of realization. Even though by the end of this episode they had managed to make friends with the elves, no matter how hard she would try, there would always be incidents with them. It was just unavoidable with how big she and her mother were compared to them. And it's at this point that both Hilda and the viewer realized that they needed to leave. There was no choice if they wanted what was best for everyone. And it's this type of writing that makes the series so great. I can go on and on with more examples, but if I do that, I'll probably talk for forever. So instead, I'll go over a few key highlights. Alpha is a great character, and I love how cute his design is. He serves as Hilda's analytical sidekick, even if his solutions to problems never make much sense. The entire lore with the elves in this show, I think, is unique and comical, as they are obsessed with signing contracts and even had a war over one, even though they mention time and time again how they don't even have hands. The friendship between Frida and David is honestly adorable and pure. Frida serves as a companion to David. She encourages him to get past his fears by following the rules, but isn't too pushy about it. She sticks to the rules and creates a feeling of safety for David, and she always has a plan and knows what to do. David is timid and cowardly, so the stability that Frida provides by following the rules and always having a plan makes him feel safe. This gives them a fun and enjoyable dynamic that is fun to watch unfold. Hilda also adds a lot to their friendship by being a rule breaker and by being adventurous. Hilda helps Frida relax and have fun while she helps David get over his fears by facing them. They're the perfect trio and it's it's such a fun time watching how they influence each other's actions and decisions. However, I really don't want to spoil anything else in this series for you. These are a few of the core things that I think make this show great, but there's also so much more that I haven't even talked about. With that being said, before I begin rambling again, let's get on to the conclusion. Hilda is an extremely charming animated show that stays faithful to the original graphic novels. The style is unique and flows nicely, the color palette is simplistic yet memorable, and the character designs are fun and interesting. The voice acting is spot on, fitting the character that each person was assigned perfectly. Sound effects are good and don't overwhelm the viewer while they're trying to listen to dialogue or music. The music sets a nice rustic and mythical vibe, creating a sense of immersion while you watch. The characters in the story are unique and don't rely too heavily on tropes to have likable and interesting characters. The situations that the main characters are thrown in never seem forced or thrown in there just for the sake of the plot, except for in one instance. All in all, this show is very solid and receives a final rating of... 
box it. Box it is the highest rating that I can give on this show, meaning that this show is an instant classic and worth watching multiple times. The other two ratings are squash it, which means that it isn't worth watching, and watch it, which means that it's worth watching, but maybe not more than once or twice. I for one can say that I'm excited for Hilda season two to come out, and I'm hoping that it will be even better than season one. But before we end today's video, I wanted to give a shout out to my highest tier patrons on Patreon. Allison Bobbitt, Misao Mullen, Ryan D, Shirley's Jefferson, Sierra Allen, and Vlad Kirpichenko. Thanks for supporting me, guys. If you'd like to see scripts to videos like this one a day early and receive other perks, consider becoming a patron. Or, alternatively, consider buying merch from the channel's official Teespring or Redbubble store. If you can't make a monthly donation on Patreon, but would still like to support the channel with a one-time payment, we now have official t-shirts and stickers that are available for purchase. All proceeds go towards the betterment of the channel and to the artist who I commissioned to illustrate the designs. With all that being said, I hope you all have an amazing day, and I will see you all in the next episode of Toon Reviews.